This one here. I turn it and then... Is that it? Can you hear me? Hello? Gordon. I mean, Freeman. Dr. Freeman, sorry. Hey, you're over in the stormwater system, right? I know they need you back soon, but could you do me a favor while you're down there and grab my garden gnome? Little ceramic thing. Blue coat, pointy red hat. I think it'd really help spice up the landscaping around base. If it's not too much trouble, he should be in the reservoir, down where we had that makeshift church set up. I really appreciate it, Doc. Thanks a million. Hello and welcome to Custom Gamer. My name is Dez, and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. Today we're carrying on with Ambushville, this is part 7, and we're looking at Temple Stand-In by Rob Martins. This is another map which is inspired by a real world location, the Tokyo Storm Drain system, which we'll have a look at in a minute once we get down there. Now this map has me torn because on one side it has this incredible kind of not very very detailed but incredibly monolithic and impressive architecture and just this fantastic atmosphere to go with it and on the other hand it, the gameplay really I found quite frustrating honestly um, mainly just uh, through a lack of kind of guiding the player properly I think and there's uh, some timing issues that we can talk about as well but just the the epic nature of the environment really drew me in so this is what we have here and this might look familiar to a couple of people that perhaps are interested in architecture or just crazy buildings. So here's the Tokyo Storm Drain system. You can see it's absolutely huge. Uh, this is built, I'm not quite sure how big the whole system is, but I imagine it's for flood water for the entirety of Tokyo, so it's got to be pretty damn big. And uh, this whole system has inspired so many game levels, it's, it's hard to keep track. I know there was a, a level in Mirror's Edge, completely based on uh, this system. I've seen levels in other games based on this as well. It's the giant pillars that really give it away. And the lighting in here is particularly impressive. So you've got the nice distance fog which helps highlight the pillars in the distance. Then you've got just light streaming in from outside at the other end which uh, helps give everything a, a little bit of a warm glow which kind of descends down into the, uh, the pit as you go down helps highlight the pillars as well so you kind of get a different shade of light on each side which I think always looks really nice. And so the, the lovely voice acting at the beginning which actually was really well done I, that made me laugh really really hard when uh, I first played this map. Uh, tells us to go and grab a garden gnome from the makeshift church down here which we're gonna go and do. And the first time I played this map I got absolutely destroyed. I'm not going to lie, I got absolutely destroyed. Uh, I think the main issue is that while you're moving around with the garden gnome, obviously you can't shoot because you're either holding it or you're punting it around with the gravity gun. And the, the timings between the different waves of combined soldiers that appear once you pick it up I think are just not long enough so you end up being attacked almost constantly and uh, you never really have a chance to pick up the gnome and move it or even pick it up and punt it with a gravity gun it can be very very punishing here we go, we've grabbed it another issue is that the player is told to come and grab this gnome uh, but the objective is actually optional all you really have to do is get down to the church and trigger this sequence here as far as I know, anyway. I trigger this battle. I love the the way the strider just looks so tiny in this in this room. I, I think it really helps to emphasise just how large this uh, structure is. And you've got something like a strider reduced to a, a mosquito. <laughs> See, so yeah, once the combine waves start catching up with you, things get very very difficult. Another issue I found out, which is actually worse later on but kind of applies here as well, is that because it's so dark down here it can be very very easy to lose the gnome. And again the gnome isn't essential to complete the map but I feel like players will think it is and they'll go back to find it and bring it forwards even though they don't actually need it. It's definitely presented as a very critical objective at the start of the map. I don't think it's really realistic to expect players to think it's optional. So 
take out the Strider there. But yeah, it's not so bad up here because you've got all the sunlight coming in which lights this area up, but this tunnel we're coming up to here, it's a real pain to actually find the gnome. Because it's basically pitch black. And uh, as you'll see here, <laughs> a, a pile of combined bodies starts piling up and I actually can't find the gnome because it's buried in there somewhere. Which is a real problem. Uh, ways to solve this, um, perhaps either more environment lighting or attach something to the gnome model which make it stand out like a, a glow or some other prop parented to it. So you can see here you kind of pick up the gnome to move it and as soon as you pick it up there's a, a combine in your face. I've, I found this area very very stressful to play because I knew that as soon as I picked up the gnome I would be attacked and there's nothing really you can do about that it's just the timings are way too short I think this map might have benefited more from having kind of predefined ambushes on the way back up rather than a, a constant stream of combine like this it's an issue I think Lost at Sea had as well where uh, the combine would just kind of come, come at you one by one after the initial rush because they kind of spawn randomly around the map and uh, they would never really organise a proper ambush, they kind of trickle in one at a time. But yeah, I think this map suffers from that a little as well. So let's try that one again, shall we? And for some reason, the, on my first playthrough of this map, I was not using the gravity gun to pump the gnome around, I was just carrying him around, which of course is a terrible idea. You can't run while you're carrying objects, and obviously you can't shoot either. So yeah, that made things twice as hard. I think a symptom of that is that a lot of these Amishville maps actually gave you weapons at the very start of the map uh, without telling you. Uh, which is something I never really like in custom maps. I think it would almost, almost be better in, in maps where you really want to have weapons at the start. Just lay them out on a table in front of the player at the start of the map or something. Because the act of picking up the weapon, you know, the player makes a mental note that they have weapons and that they, they're going to use them. When you just give the player a whole bunch of weapons at the start of the map, it sometimes doesn't even register that they have them. I think that was the case with me and the gravity gun. The first time I played this, I didn't actually check that I had one. We've escaped from the combine. Incidentally, this, this map has really nice settings on the... Uh, the glows around the lights, it blends in with the HDR really really nicely. And here's the exit. This is another thing I didn't really like about the map too much is that this exit is really really obscure. The player's not going to remember that sign from the start of the map after all that that just happened. Real good guy. I'm going to make sure everybody knows about this. Ooh, I could make him a tiny crowbar. Maybe a little pair of glasses too. Oh man, this is going to be good. Job well done, Doc. Alright, more Ambushville coming soon.